I just really want to thank IST for uh, continuing to include us on the, in this. And, um, we, you know, we uh, uh, felt that the ransomware task force really uh, accomplished quite a lot um, for, since its beginning. And uh, um, the, doing this on a, a, a date with numer numerical uh, uh, si significance here, 2424, uh, allows uh, us to focus the attention a little bit, which I think is a great idea and looking forward to hearing more from the folks as we move forward. Thanks. All right. How's everybody doing? Excellent. All right. See a lot of heads on phones. Um, welcome. It's really exciting to have everybody here. I think when we first set out, I made this same comment last night, um, when we first set out to do this, we didn't imagine that we were going to be reconvening on an annual basis and quite the, the opposite was what we were hoping for. Um, we still have a lot of work to do. Um, it's, it's really great to see this room, to see so many familiar faces. Um, but anyway, so I think as everyone knows all too well, it was about three years ago now that we went through the ransomware task force process. Um, we were very fortunate to convene colleagues from over 60 different organizations to come together with that express intent to try and centralize expertise and come up with a comprehensive framework to get after this ransomware scourge. I think everybody here knows that resultant report contributed to what we think is a great deal of activity and action, both by public sector and private sector actors. And today we're back here to take stock of that action. I think there is really much to celebrate. There's much to applaud. We will hear today from a lot of folks in the panel discussions and in the room as to what has happened for the positive over the last year, since the last time we did this. But we're also here today, I was gonna think our collaborative research efforts show that really only about half, right? So we, out of that, massive report that we did with all of you, there were 48 recommendations, 81 pages, 48 recommendations. Only about half of those have seen significant progress. So that leaves us with 24 still left to work on. So as a result, this year we're doubling down, right? Ransomware continues to persist and in some estimates has continued to increase in volume. So when we first set out to do this work with so many of you, we heard from most of you actually, some complaints about how think tanks would show up and wanna jump in and help work on a problem set, would host a bunch of convenings, would write a seminal report, and then would just disappear. And what we committed to all of you is that we wouldn't do that and that we would stick at it with you. And that's what we're here to do today. Clearly a lot more remains to be done as we pursue that progress on those remaining 24 recommendations. So today we're honored to bring together partners, colleagues and champions in this space. And I think we have a really fantastic lineup uh, to get after this, to get us back to the basics, right? To think about how to deter, think about how to better disrupt, think about better uh, preparation and response. So we'll get started in just a moment. But before I do, as the CEO of the Institute for, uh, the Institute for Security and Technology, I would be remiss if I didn't take a second to say thank you to Bree and to Ari um, for the Center for Cybersecurity uh, and for the Center for Cybersecurity Policy and Law, I always mangle that, um, and to Palo Alto Networks for making this possible. But then more than anybody, I would argue to Mr. Craig Newmark, who quite literally the RTF would not be able to continue to do what it does if it wasn't for your support, Craig. So thank you. Also, just a quick word of thanks to our other supporters to AWS, Banco Santander, Bank of America, Microsoft, and Zscaler. You are who make this possible. So thank you for that support. Now, I'm exceedingly pleased to kick things off this morning with a virtual opening keynote from Senator Tim Kaine of Virginia. 